So you read the title properly, I bought another vehicle. Basically the reasoning behind it was I was tired of the 4Runner braking every time I took it off the pavement. As you saw in last Friday's video, I messed up the driver's side door and fender when I was trying to jump start it, which then actually turned out to be a dead starter anyway. Um, and on that topic as well, I got tired of replacing alternators and starters. We're now on the fifth alternator in that thing within the last four months and also the third starter now within, I think, since last November. To circumvent that, I went ahead and bought this absolute unit right here. This is a 1992 Jeep Cherokee Laredo. So a few of you are probably wondering what became of the 4Runner. I actually ended up scrapping the thing. I didn't feel like fixing the fender. Uh, it had a couple of other issues as well. So I actually ended up getting $600 for it at the scrapyard, which is actually how much the Jeep Cherokee ended up costing, which we'll get into that a little bit more later in the video. Regardless, the point of this whole video is to let you guys know that I got a far superior vehicle, a far more reliable vehicle than the 4Runner, that being the 92 Jeep Cherokee. Now with this thing being a $600 vehicle, it does have a couple of issues. None of them are like super severe or anything, but before we get into them, I'm going to give you guys a cold startup of this thing. So guys, we're inside the Jeep Cherokee now. Take a look at this old school interior. Look at this steering wheel right here. No airbag, just a good old horn. <laughs> look at the dashboard right here. We have more gauges than the 4Runner had. It actually shows the freaking battery voltage. It shows your oil pressure. It even shows the temp. Like the 4Runner showed the temp, but it didn't say what the temp was, if that makes sense. See, this says 100, 210, and then 260. Uh, we have the, the, the fuel gauge right here, and uh, on this, back to the steering wheel, there's only one stock, so this is your uh, blinkers right here. And to turn on the hazards, you actually pull this little thing out. Maybe you push it in. Yep, you push it in. So that's pretty cool there, that's super old school. Um, to turn on the headlights in this thing, it's actually a little knob that you pull out right here. That's old school, and actually, if you look over here, no check engine light. We'll get into that a little bit more later as well. Now coming up over here, we've got the original head unit out of this thing. That's pretty sweet. Tape deck with the clock that's not set properly. Analog knobs, it's freaking sweet. We have the old school sliders for the, uh, the, the HVAC system in here. Which as you can see, it does work. Uh, the AC, as I've heard, is not charged though. And then coming down here, we have the T-handle shifter, which is pretty sweet. We have the uh, 4x4 uh, transfer case shifter, which I'm not gonna mess with and we'll get into why later. And this uh, older looking handbrake thing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on a little drive in this thing. I love that shifter, guys. Now, this thing actually handles pretty good. This car is almost 30 years old now. As I said, it is a 1992. Uh, the steering wheel is actually easier to turn than it was in the 4Runner, which another issue with the 4Runner was the power steering pump was on its way out. But now we got this 92 Cherokee with the power steering pump that's just fine. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys how quick this thing is. Check this out. That's pretty quick. I'm going to do it again in just a second so you can see the speedo. Now I think for a car that's almost 30 years old, with its original engine and almost 250,000 miles on it, this thing gets up and goes pretty good for what it is. It's definitely faster than the 4Runner was. Another thing with this compared to the 4Runner is the turning radius is a lot tighter. The transmission in this thing shifts perfect. The engine runs crazy smooth. Again, for it being an almost 30 year old vehicle, this engine is in very good condition. 
Um, and another com uh, comparison to the Forerunner is that this is an inline six and not a V6. Let's go ahead and get into the story of how I actually got this thing. Hey guys, it's Josiah. <laughs> camera in and out like a fucking vlogger, dude. Hey, it's Josiah. Um, I'm gonna tell the story about how Sam acquired this absolute unit here. She's a real beauty. We'll, we'll go over why. But anyways, so I, I found this on Marketplace forum because he just told me he wanted to get a Cherokee and I got two of them. So I figured, you know, I kind of know what I'm doing with them, but saw it on a marketplace and we eventually a few days later um, looked at it and we go down and it's about an hour and a half drive without much traffic on a good day and we get down there take a look at it and got it started up the guy said it hadn't started in like i'd probably say six seven months maybe up to a year and he said he tried starting it and it wouldn't go. Well, first thing I noticed is it had a small battery. I brought one from my 96 that you guys, um, if you check out the Colorado off-road videos, you can see it in there. But uh, took the battery out of that, put that in, got some starting fluid, put it down the throttle body and it cranked right over. It was kind of rough on the idle. Um, I'd uh, keep the throttle body open for it to actually run. And then after that, it started to idle. And it was okay. Uh, we let it warm up. The guy said that once it was warmed up, that's when it would stall. And um, got it warmed up, and it seemed to be running fine. So let it warm up. Um, did a little bit of negotiating with them. They're like, well, let's take it on a test drive. Put in the gears. All the gears worked good. I did the first drive, um, and it would buck a little bit with some throttle, but overall seemed to be running okay. And I was like, well, we should be able to get it back home, hopefully pretty easily. Then Sam drove it and, you know, seemed to be doing okay. So we get back and the guy wanted a 1300 for it. Um, I did my negotiations on him and got it down to 700 just because of some of the issues it had. And the guy kind of needed to get rid of it. So we agreed on 700 after paying for it, signing off the title, doing the bill of sale and all that. He's getting all his stuff out and then he's like, oh yeah, I just remembered. And I was like, great. There's probably something really wrong with it that he's just about to say, um, but wasn't actually too bad. He's like, yeah, the ball stud in the hatch broke off so the hatch won't stay up. And I was like, oh, well, that's not bad. He took off another hundred bucks. This is a $600 rig. Funny thing is my 96 was also a $600 rig. Um, I think I got that down from like 12 or 1300 too, which is actually pretty funny. Um, but thing with my 96 is it had a break in the same exact place and I already welded it up so I can just do the same thing on this it take an hour of my time so nothing too bad we were driving it back and about five minutes out and I was the one I was said I'd drive it just because if something goes wrong we just agreed that I'd probably just be better at handling it and um, I've driven kind of sketchy cars before so it's nothing too new but we get about five minutes out it's bucking real hard Google Maps being as wonderful as it is sent us to the wrong area where a road was closed because we we're trying to take the back roads not the highway thankfully I uh, did that and we get to the stop sign it stalls I'm trying to crank it I'm trying to crank it it's not doing anything it's kind of sputtering smoke coming out the exhaust it's not wanting to start so I'm like great a couple people were behind us so I jump out get the starting fluid take off the hose for the intake spray down the throttle body uh, I think I had Sam crank it. I played with the throttle body. It started. I was like, okay, let's just keep going, see how it goes. Then we get to a light, a busy intersection, and this is still an hour and a half plus away from our house. Light turns green, dies. Right as I get on the throttle, it dies and will not start, will not start, will not start. And I tried the starting fluid, everything, it would not go. So I'm like, Sam, we need to get it out of the way because there's people behind us. At least, I think maybe two people honked at us and there's a 7-Eleven right next to us. So we're like, all right, let's push it there. Well, we're slightly downhill. So Sam's able to push it and then I was turning it and then uphill, well, they're heavy and you know, we couldn't keep pushing it. Thankfully, two guys came by and helped us out. And me and those two guys, we pushed it and Sam drove it up into the uh, parking lot. And from there, I tried starting it, tried starting it, nothing. And then I'm like, we're both like, it smells like gas, like, really bad. I'm like, I don't know if it's just flooding and it's not getting spark or what's going on. And we look underneath and it's just pouring out gas from the inlet side of the fuel filter. The hose, the clamp on it was just not strong enough and it would be leaking. So we um, were able to, there's auto zone close by. We went over there, got a new fuel filter, new clamp and the adjustable clamp that you can screw down. And I put that on, stopped leaking. 
I was like, great, get it started. And it was cooling for, it took us about an hour, an hour and a half, I think, to get it going again. We get it going, it's idling perfect. It's driving super smooth. We get down the road and about another five or so minutes later, it starts bucking real bad. I'm like, dude, I'm not driving this. I need to pull over, pull over into a gas station. Thankfully it stayed running until then. And I was thinking, I was like, man, we might need a tow. Sam Hughes, you know, not too happy about it. He said, man, I just regret getting this thing. Of course it happened right after I bought it. It's a piece of junk. Shouldn't have gotten it. Should have kept the forerunner. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm just going to call a place, try to get a quote, called a place that said they're open 24 hours. Well, nobody answered. So I was like, great. Well, and then I remembered, oh, it has a check engine light. And one of the codes was like for the battery being disconnected. One was something for like a bulb. And then the third one was for the coolant sensor that's in the thermostat housing. And so I was like, you know, that could make it run off. I know I've, after doing research, I had, it ended up being a TPS, but on my 96, it had it would idle really, really bad. And I just replaced a TPS like a few months before that. And one of the things I found out was that, yeah, the coolant sensors can make them run really, really bad. I also had some vacuum lines disconnected and all that, which doesn't help them. But I was like, all right, I'm gonna try at least clean the terminals on the coolant sensor. I didn't have any brake cleaner, or electric parts cleaner there. So I just got a bristle brush I brought along and a towel and kind of cleaned off the pins, plugged it up again, started it, started right up. A little rough, but once it got idling, it ran perfect. Before I um, cleaned the terminals on the coolant sensor, one thing that we noticed is that sometimes it would start smoking really bad. And when we're sitting there cranking, 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 it would almost kind of fire, but not really. And it would just be smoking crazy out the exhaust. And Sam got a short clip of it. So you'll be able to see it was smoking really bad. And then after I did that, things started right up, idled fine, ran great, ripped real good, no smoke. Drove fine, took us about an hour and a half, hour 45, got back to his house and everything seemed good. And then the reason why we didn't put into four wheel drive here is because, so I drove it back over an hour and a half of it being super smooth, running perfect, not even close to stalling. You know, we get to his house and he's like, well, I wanna drive it. You know, it's his vehicle. So of course he wants to drive it. And we go down and we're like, oh, we forgot to test and see if the four wheel drive system works. So I was like, yeah, popped in four low and you know, just make sure it engages. And we do that and he, you know, kind of gets on it and then it made like a clunk or something and then it stalled. And then we're like, oh, don't be stalled here. It's like, all right, put it back in two, get it back in two, started right up. Everything seemed fine. Then he went down the road and whenever you let off the throttle, it would like clunk and it'd make like a kind of like a grinding noise. And so I was like, oh, this, this poor thing, let's get it back to your house and stop it. I'll look at it tomorrow. Came over the next day. And first thing I did was I adjusted the transfer case linkage because over time those can um, go out and it can kind of mess with, you know, how engaged the transfer case is. So I did that first thing and lever got it right on point. And then I was like, well, let me drive it and let me see how it feels, see if I can kind of figure something out. And I go down and I did that same kind of like grind noise and almost stalled once. After that, it's been running fine ever since. And uh, we haven't put in four wheel drive. I need to check some mounts and some other things to make sure that those are good. But since then, it's been running fine. I think it's probably the transmission mount or the motor mounts because it looks like the clutch fan is hitting the fan shroud, which would explain it kind of jolting the clutch fan, and that's why it almost stall. So that's what my bet is, but I'll have to do more looking on it. Um, but yeah, now we got it. It starts right up. You know, the thing when we first got it, like I said earlier, is that it had the check engine light on, and that was for its code. This is OBD1, not OBD2. OBD2 started in the 96 Cherokees because that was federally required, but um, I checked the codes, and it was 22, and that was the one for the coolant sensor, and it was on the entire time when we drove back. Well, the day after him getting it, when I came over and adjusted the linkage and did all that, I also got a coolant sensor from the junkyard. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just try that. I went, replaced it, cleaned off the terminals really good, plugged it in with the junkyard sensor, check engine light went away, it starts right up. And one thing I noticed actually before doing the sensor, which is why I wanted to try it, was that the electric fan was on the whole time. 
Sometimes it would shut off, but most of the time it was on. Well, the electric fan should only come on when it's getting, I think, above 215 degrees. Maybe it's different with these years. I know they changed it throughout the run of the XJs. Um, and also with these older ones when you have the AC on. Well, the AC was off and it was running cool. It would do this on a totally cold start too. Replace the sensor, start it right up, no check engine light, no fan, and it's been running great ever since. So I'm gonna kind of go over some of the things that this is gonna need looked at and just kind of go over some of the problems it had, what I replaced as well. So if you would get over to the engine bay here, so like Sam said, a junkyard coolant sensor. It was given a, like I said earlier, that code. Well, this got it running perfect now. Another thing is this grommet here, which I will need to zip tie this for now. Uh, this is also from the junkyard. Um, this PCV or CCV valve, I don't know what it is. I keep hearing conflicting reports whenever I look at it. But anyways, this was broken off like a lot of them are. Got that replaced, fixed this line. This actually had the wrong airbox cover when he bought it. Someone down the line replaced it and just didn't get the right one. So I went to the junkyard, got one for him that has this vacuum connector, the old one. The one that was on it when he got it had the later style Cherokee airbox, which just got rid of that vacuum. Here's the wiring for the crank sensor. As you can tell, it's a real beauty, um, but it works. So they just had to splice into the wiring harness. Um, I'm not gonna mess with it. I don't care to look at it. I think I might've just found another potential vacuum leak. But yeah, so that's rigged, not that great, but if it works, it works. Also got this from the junkyard, this oil cap, the one that was on it was super, super ghetto rigged. And I'm surprised I didn't cut myself getting it off. This, first of all, broken. I'll get one out of a U-pull sometime. But this Jeep does not have ABS. It had a relay for the ABS system, and then it had a broken relay laying over the ABS pump. Well, if you look at right over here, that this does not have ABS. So that was also weird. If you look at this fuse box, there's actually no contacts down there for it to connect. Down here, this looks to be another vacuum leak that it looks like they plugged, I guess. That's nice. So I'll have to see, oh. What do you know? The line's right here. So I'll have to unplug that. So unfortunately, previous owner did put a lot of money into this thing and just a little uh, coolant sensor. So it sucks for him, but you know, we got a good ride for Sam. Starts and runs good now. It, you know, it does need some work, but it was kind of, he got it for a project. So I'm gonna teach him how to do the wrenching on it and whatnot. So hopefully by the end, it'll be a pretty good mechanic. Yeah, I think it'll be good. It does have some issues, but it is a almost 30 year old vehicle. So, you know. That's what you could expect from it. So there you go, guys. That is going to be it for this first look at this 1992 Jeep Cherokee. It's going to be a fun project. We're planning on making a few videos on fixing some stuff up on it. Uh, it's also going to be a pretty fun off-roading rig once it starts to look like Josiah's 1996 Cherokee does. Um, as far as the 4Runner goes, though, I don't think I'll miss it too much. Let me show you why. You think I'd sell this thing, guys? Come on. Guys, I'm never gonna get rid of this 4Runner. This is gonna be my daily driver. I'm still gonna occasionally take it on trails, uh, especially with these brand new tires I just put on it. Check that out, ooh. You might have caught a glimpse of these in uh, last Friday's video when we were working on the door, but these are brand new KO2s, beautiful deep tread, all the good stuff. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this video officially now. As usual, if you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Big shout out to Josiah for helping me film this video. Finding the Cherokee, doing a bunch of work on the Cherokee, and actually going down to Colorado Springs to pick the Cherokee up with me. Anyway, though, guys, until Wednesday, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.